How's it going everyone? Liam Caddison here and this is episode number three for season two of Dollhouse. Uh, this is called Bell Chose, I believe it's called. And uh, yeah, I'm already loving um, the varieties of, of storytelling that season two is offering with, of course, um, this season building towards 2019 and uh, episode one being very, very interesting, setting things up with, with uh, Echo, maintaining those uh, personalities. And the last episode was uh, about how that motherly instinct overpowers the programming and uh, how uh, how it, it was pretty, pretty intense, uh, especially... Um, the final moments between the mother and, and and the father in an effort for the mother to reclaim the child. Uh, well, it was a balance, wasn't it? It was a balance of Echo and and um, the parental side, uh, the parental imprint that she had. So yeah, um, but it was pretty pretty awesome stuff. Where all we also got a bit of um, the senator who was looking into Rossum as well and uh, his backstory as well. So uh, that was uh, very very juicy. But yeah, um, with that said, let's delve into episode number three for this season of Dollhouse. This is uh, Bell Chose. Let's go. What? The shit. This guy's off his off has has lost his marbles. Guess we have to I was gonna say the guy didn't check his left and right. <laughs> that is creepy though, come on. I was looking for you. I'm glad. Would you like a, um, a towel? Yes, thank you. I'm wet. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, like... Paul is just having a crisis. Have we determined yet if the condition is reversible? I have to finish mapping his neural landscape, but if so I can that was the creepy out a way sneak up So what happened to, uh, to the other women? I'm assuming the paral uh, paralysis wore off. Give him a man reaction. I choose not to hear no. that. No. No. Do we really want to wake this guy up? Some of your more famous serial killer's brains look like. Basically. We're quite certain of this. Certain enough that I have serious ethical problems trying to wake him up. Topher has ethical problems. <laughs> yeah, way to land it. Get me and I just know that if I can talk to him If he is to be questioned We do it on my terms Oh, I just My terms That's all I don't know Del put uh, Steering Um Listen to her call Interrogate a possible serial killer Serial killer Come on. God. Yeah. <laughs> Paul's like, thank you. I'm done. Bye. But yeah, we got more Echo and Langton. I need this. Goodness gracious. Hello, Terry. <gasps> I mean, poor Victor. I figured it was medieval lit, not advanced evil. How hard could it be? So I skipped intro to evil or whatever, but how is it that I get an F when this guy that we're reading, Chauncey, can't even spell? It's Chaucer. It's gonna be it's like old Middle Ig English. Yeah. Right, like or something. As I said, my office is open. You can't open. spell. If you'd could discuss it. Are you and Karen's? Any part of that a boy's name? Ooh. Straight to the shit talk. Love it. Terry, I gotta ask, and I think you know I gotta ask. Have you been practicing dentistry on large cats? <laughs> Leopards, pumas... What? I'm just wondering why it is you have traces of a veterinary grape or worth it. You pushed them away. Alienated everyone in your life so you could surround yourself with the fakes. The copies. It made you feel the like the perfect you life. Control. You're not in control. Paul! Does this look like a guy who's in control? <laughs> I just love this intimidation he's throwing to him. You wanna have a nice day? They won't let you. Because they're not nice. They are never nice. 
They care more about creepy. their dates and their boyfriends, and they don't pay attention to Terry. They never let Terry play. So he got neglected. No time for Terry. God, they are... how he's just conveying whore. that sinisterism. No, she's not a whore. You're saying she uses... You nice day, you make shade, you put plastic umbrellas in the drinks, it doesn't matter. It never matters. But I thought women back then had to do whatever a man said. Not gonna lie, Allison this interrogation is kind of giving Allison me Joker vibes, like from her. Dark Knight. Not literature. Still. <laughs> progress is I progress. Can this. I can make this right. Now let me play again. We just need a new aunt, Sheila. We know he's killed at least. Jesus, this family is messed up. I mean, you got your uncle bailing him out and being completely fine with this shit, basically. And he left the body Jordan, there for them us. to watch. No, he isn't. We won't let him. What's your name? Megan. Megan. This is a novice. This is second name of repulsive. Remember that. We're human, not his toys. We're getting out of here. I'm personally against it. You need to free Victor of him. Love to. He's not here. I do know this. Well, like, like. Yeah. Like Echo in Grey it Hour. It can't be done. It can be done. Alpha did it with Echo. But he used a tonal interface. Serial killer Victor would need to have a phone. I need to have a tone. I'd have to get him to answer the phone. Do you have his number? Obviously not. Well... Think of another way. Think of it fast. Yeah, there has to be another way than just a phone. Like... <sighs> and the thing is, he hasn't got his tracker as well, so that's made things even worse. Sure, I'm feeling your boy power. Now let's talk about this F. Oh, oh God. Oh, Lord. It must be love or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is Boyd. Hey, Boyd. It's Boyd's just Cooper. accepted it. Trying to... I mean, at least it looks like it's working, but like... I'm just imagining all kinds of calamity. Let there be light. What did you call me? I am an incredible woman. Goodness gracious. Oh no! Oh no! Cooper, did you end the engagement? What? Lantern! Oh, I thought he was gonna... Get back to the house. I thought Echo was gonna like, um, yeah, kind of like revenge. I get rid over, so you get rid over. Everything's going fine. Yeah, this is Boyd. I need an ambulance. So how did it happen? If Terry is an Echo, where did Kiki go? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Swapped. Oh my god, he's twerking. He's twerking. Piteously at night, I made them swing. You know what that means? I have no idea, but it's wicked filthy. Oh, no. <laughs> Buying a girl a drink before you swing. Okay. You think he might be what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did he just. Oh, fuck you, dude. You suck! Trying to hit a girl? Oh, Paul. Just bet you do. Everybody always wants to leave Terry. How about you, this Aunt Sheila? It's not Sheila? a good way to... Oh, shh. You just feel like leaving? Aunt Sheila. Aunt this Sheila is not a good leave. way to deal with family dramatics. Take a tip from her. You're staying. Come 
coming back. It's like the Echo mindset and the and, and his mindset are in a race on who can control the mind first. Get away from the first. door. He won't let me. What are you talking about? Get away from the door. You have to kill him. That what do you mean, mean killing you her? Have to kill her. Yes. No problem. <laughs> the red-headed boy. He liked the way the boy looked at you. That's why he took you. Oh my god, because it was Doesn't homely. It, it was homely for his heart. You need to stop it's sick. for that little boy. You won't get another chance. Gecko, <laughs> are you okay? I don't think so. Kind of creepy the way she's like, the, like she. Of course, she's gonna maintain um, a part of of him. It's just kind of still like eerie, isn't it? How she's like, how she just sees him die. It's just she's like, oh, so yeah. Um, so I guess yeah, they did put him out of his misery, like. Um, well, it would be misery. Like, it's a misery of, of, of a life spent. Like, yes, he had issues, but... Like, this isn't the way to go about your your issues, really, in the, to begin with. This... It, like, the way he... Um, the way he constructed the perfect life for him was just absolutely... Ugh... It was absolute. It it was absolutely. Um, it was absolutely uh, creepy at first, uh, like when we well when we first started out um, this episode. And like I said, it's not the way to, to to go about the situation to handle your your family drama. And yes, we all want the perfect life, but like you don't go over those boundaries to make sure you have the perfect like the perfect life like he did you don't you don't go over those bound boundaries and um and harm innocent women women who don't even know you so your little fantasy can become a reality cuz especially in the way he did it it's it's quite ugh but yeah, it was really, really, uh, it, like, I really loved how strong this episode was. I, I just loved Victor as well, especially, especially when he was, um, uh, especially when he was Terry, uh, when Paul was interrogating him. I, I don't know why, but I think it was just the way he, he, he voiced that sinisterism. It kind of got me vibes of, like, the Joker, Batman, uh, like, scene in, in Dark Knight. Um, yeah. Oh, it was absolutely so, so... Yeah. Oof. Man, that was insane. I just w really, really felt that episode was, um, sinister. It was, um... It was absolutely repulsive as well in terms of, um... Terry and it it worked really really well. I just loved some of the um, a, there was a lot of moments in this episode that I was really really compelled by, especially, um, especially when we had Victor being interrogated. I think Edna did a very very incredible job at conveying that sinisterism. It it, it just felt so chilling, and uh, the way he voiced it was just oh. It's enough to make your spine shiver. I just really loved how incredible of an actor he he is, and um, how how he perfectly portrayed this this psycho who doesn't really have any remorse about what he's doing. He just wants to fulfill his his sick fantasy, and um, yeah, it was just 
a really, really fantastic episode. Um, and I really love the fact that this episode did explore a bit of the more uh, morality re regarding the dollhouse because uh, they soon found out who uh, Terry was. And there was a bit of a kerfuffle about what should be done because this guy is is like this guy is someone we cannot support, and uh, even Adele was like was was like telling the uncle, "No, this this guy is a, a complete monster. We can't we can't." And um, of course, the uncle had to be a complete. See you next Tuesday. Brush aside the concerns that Adele had. And was fine taking Victor, who was imprinted with Terry, out, thinking all he needs is a word. Because, you know, someone who is messed up like that, who who has these serial killer tendencies, yeah, a word is going to convince them. No, it's not, and he died anyways, because he was a bit stubborn, so... Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was just really, it was a really, really, um, powerful episode, uh, in terms of, like, uh, like I said, exploring the morality re re within the dollhouse, because one of the things I really, really loved was, um, not just Adele pointing out that supporting Terry is not something that they are comfortable with, but also she, um, put a lot of demand on Tofa to find um, Victor by any means necessary because the last thing they want is another alpha situation and this is what they have so so this is uh, bringing back bad day like bad deja vu for for the dollhouse because this is good this is alpha 2.0 all over again all I don't know alpha 3 if you want to consider the little uh, Omega alpha situation but uh, no, in all seriousness, it's it's deja vu for for the dollhouse again, and they cannot risk uh, this happening. Fortunately, um, the wipe did happen, and it led to Victor as Kiki, which was absolutely wonderful. And I just love the fact that he didn't get beaten up because I was a, I was a bit worried that as soon as that guy was raising his fist, he'd knock out Victor or something like that. But Victor was like, no, 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 no. So. Yeah, Victor as Kiki was absolutely amazing. It was short, but sweet. So, um, yeah, I didn't expect it to go that way. Um, like, even when you, you realised the swap happened, I didn't realise how um, how fun it would be. And it was it was a blessing. So I just absolutely um, loved it. Um, I really liked the fact that they did pull... Uh, pull Paul aside from handling Echo um, to go to that FBI scene. i got to say, Paul did a fascinating job as well getting inside Terry and uh, really trying to throw the intimidation towards him. So I really, uh, that was my favourite scene of the whole episode because uh, there was some great back and forth going on uh, between Paul and Victor. There was, there was some brilliant acting being portrayed. I just really, really loved it. Um, but yeah, uh, Paul being pulled aside. So his, uh, I'm, I'm really um, glad that there seems to be a bit of a, I wouldn't say it's all rosy, but it, there seems to be a bit more of a developed relationship within the dollhouse and Paul, even though Paul is working against them uh, behind the scenes. Um, but they they do, like the dollhouse side, Adele and all of them, they seem to be a bit more relaxed with Paul. Uh, I don't know, there was like bits of conversation that... that didn't feel that tension. So I really, really liked that. I am kind of sad that we didn't get to see much of Boyd and Echo. Like he was just, but then again, he couldn't really do much whilst um, her and the uh, tutor were like getting down and all of that. So yeah, but um, I, I don't know when uh, Paul was pulled aside, which was also funny. Like he, he was like pulled aside from, from waiting for Echo. He's like, thank goodness. <laughs> um, I was kind of hoping we'd get to see a bit more of the Boyd and Echo relationship because that was one of the things I really loved about season one. They had that father, that father, um, daughter vibe to them. And, um, yeah, I really do wish we could have like expanded a little. I know he's not that his, uh, he's not Echo's handler anymore, but 
I don't, I'm just a sucker for that, like, relationship, and I would have loved to have seen a bit more expanded between the pair, so, yeah, but, um, it was a very, very incredible episode, um, yeah, I just really loved, uh, as well, the parallels between the tutor and, and Terry, because, um, they were both, like, creepy in their own way, but, um, like, one... I guess was was kind of um repressing um women and and freedom with with Terry um taking innocent women and molding his fantasy and um uh the tutor was um I guess embrace it was on the opposite and he was like embracing um uh, women so yeah um but the, but it was still uh eerie for from both sides just it was a lot more eerie with with terry because he was truly psychotic um and you and, and i'm really really glad that that at first like those first moments really painted that vibe they they didn't um they they just went straight into it this guy's a creep hate him and we did so um yeah um but um yeah, like I said, I am I am really really glad that the side of morality came into a factor with Dollhouse, uh, with the Dollhouse should I say, because you had, um, Topher bringing up some like concerns at the beginning. I mean, Boyd made a joke about it, like Topher's got ethical issues. Topher of all people, um. But I think um, that's a good sign and on saying like okay, we're not joking around. This guy is a complete psychopath and we need to tread with caution regarding him. So, uh, like, when Topher... Like, when Boyd points out Topher, of all people, has ethical issues, I think that's a... That's a, a, that's a telling sign that, okay, well, let's... Let's take this with, with extreme caution. And then... Um, there was that situation on what do you do about a comatose Terry and, and Paul at the end um, decided to end his life. And I'm really glad that Paul is the one to, to do that because whereas there's this limbo that the rest of the dollhouse can face in terms of like, okay, well, w what do we do? Paul is a bit more on the extreme side. He's working with the dollhouse, but he's more, I guess, rebellious in that sense. So... Um, he has no qualms about um, putting an end to a psychopath's life. He's got a bit more of a, of a like that morality. But um, we saw throughout this episode that the entire dollhouse, Adele, everyone, they they had huge concerns. Um, so yeah, one thing I am wondering is what is going to happen to that tutor like what's going to happen to that professor like because we know that echo once she obtained the terry personality which she seems like she's she's maintaining um we saw him get and he seems to there's that to be determined state he didn't outright die there's room for survival um so surely one could potentially i don't know sue the doll house for a defected doll um that they sent um, because I don't think they're going to say, yeah, you know what, we accidentally um, allowed a serial killer to ex escape because uh, the serial killer's uncle was a complete stubborn idiot. So, yeah. Um, I don't think they're going to outright say that. So, like, because that's what I'm wondering. Did the professor survive uh, or not? Like, I'm assuming he did if he didn't die outright there. So, um, yeah, but... Um, I really, really um, loved how this episode did uh, go around because um, it was sickening and we saw a lot of, like, complex going on with, with, with characters, like, in terms of... Like, they... they I, I'm glad that uh, money was, like, kind of not an issue regarding the dollhouse. Like, they didn't really care. They... they I think they could have, like wiped his memory like wiped his mind they could like, well they could have they could have exact they could have done what they did to uh dominic um but it's that case i feel like his like his face his actions there's still going to be some kind of reminder so um like what whereas you remove the mind you remove that um psychotic tendency that terry did uh, maintain or uh, like all this time 
it's still going to be a, a bit of a sickening reminder and there's going to be like questions surely if you do like i don't know fix him up and send him out on the world again um so yeah um that see there's a lot of morality talk in terms of like the uh, in terms of the dollhouse and their actions today but that's because i think they uh they took a second to to analyze what terry did in his life and and was like hold up we're not comfortable with this so um yeah i really really loved how we explored that but i like i said i really loved a lot of the elements in this episode and uh, the interrogation scene um victor as kiki was just uh, comical i'm also glad as well they like with um the victor and echo swap uh, with um uh, speaking of um victor maintaining kiki um but I, I thought it was a very very fun idea because what i thought was going to happen was um there was going to be some kind of kidnapping like terry was going to take echo yeah um but i like the fact that they did the swap because uh and not just that though but we didn't have too much sinisterism from Echo. Like, we had that conflict with Echo trying to, to take the lead, whereas Terry's trying to, to to take the lead from her. And the sinisterism um, came from Victor. Like, he, uh, he was the one that was the most sinister because I think it was hard to top that level of horror personally. So, uh, and like I said, Eva did a very, very incredible job at portraying um someone who's who was psychotic so yeah um but like i said um i'm glad that they didn't spend too much of that aspect on echo and did something authentic they did um they did something that was like okay well we've got echo trying to to tell these women to to um to end the disease that's been plaguing them which was terry and you got Terry trying to come at the forefront as well. So, um, yeah, I really, really uh, liked uh, how they handled both uh, cases regarding Victor and Echo with such authenticity. So, yeah. Um, but that was that was Dollhouse episode number three of season two, which was absolutely incredible. This might be I know it's not saying much because we've only had three episodes. I say this all the time. But it might be my favorite episode so far this season. It was just it was just great exploring into like how far the dollhouse is willing to to go in terms of like um uh who they are willing to support and all that jazz and there were some funny moments, um brilliant acting. I just really enjoyed how this story flowed. So um yeah, this was a fantastic episode of dollhouse but yeah i will see you guys next time hope you guys enjoyed this reaction you can check my videos on the right if you want to check out more of my content you can also subscribe to my media feeds and channel if you want to hope you guys enjoyed this reaction hope you guys take care and i will see you guys next time toodles <laughs>